No, uh, tiga orang presenter. Ah, uh, tiga topik sekali mati you. Okay. So, doctor, can we start now? Ah, uh, start. Lah. Okay, so uh, let's start our session with Umur Kita Al-Fatihah. So, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to uh, Dr. Dr. Ahmad Fazir and my fellow friends. So, today we will be having a teaching seminar for where we will be uh, covering three topics which are uh, growth disorder, short stature and tall stature, inborn error metabolism as well as sepsis and septic shock. So, let's start with the first topic, growth disorder presented by Faiz Aiman. Okay, so this is uh, my content. Okay, uh, first I will explain briefly on the growth phase and physiology of growth hormone before going to the short stature and tall stature. Okay, uh, human growth phase can be divided into four phases, which are fetal, infantile, childhood, and pubertal spurt. Okay, so first is fetal phase, which is the uh, rapid and the most um, uh, short and rapid uh, phase, uh, account for 30% of adult height and the determinants of the childhood growth. Uh, would be the uterine environment. So it means that the maternal and also placental nutrition supply is very important during this period. Oh, before this, this is the graph of a uh, height velocity uh, over age uh, for male and females. So in infertile phase, that account for 15% of adult height is also uh, a rapid but characterized by a decelerating uh, velocity. And during this time, uh, nutrition uh, playing a vital role in the childhood growth, in, the inf in this phase growth, as well as uh, hormones, particularly thyroid hormones, as well as uh, good health and happiness. Uh, and then uh, childhood phase, which account for 40% of adult height, it is uh, a slow and prolonged phase of growth where uh, hormones play a particular role in the growth, uh, particularly uh, growth hormone and thyroid hormones. And at this point, uh, genetic uh, also play a vital role in the growth as well as good health and happiness. And according to illustrated Nelson, it is said that a profound chronic unhappiness can lead to a, a decreased growth hormone secretion that will lead to a psychosocial short stature. And then after the childhood phase, uh, there will be a pubertal spurt that will add another 15% of adult height. And at this point, uh, the sex uh, hormone will start to be secreted, which are testosterone and estrogen. And this will lead to a more secretion of growth hormone that will lead to the growth spurt, as you can see at the graph. And then uh, the presence of the sex hormone will also lead to closure of epiphyseal plate. Okay, and then as you can see from the graph, uh, the female will have an early puberty, uh, making them to have a shorter period of childhood phase. Okay, next is the, I will explain a, tip, a little bit on the physiology of the growth hormone. I think it is just a recap. Uh, so uh, first, the hypothalamus will secrete the growth hormone releasing hormone and somatostatin uh, that will act on anterior pituitary gland that will release growth hormone. And then this growth hormone will have a uh, direct effects uh, at the liver and other tissues that will uh, secrete insulin-like growth factors. And this insulin-like growth factor, IGF, will have indirect growth-promoting actions uh, to skeletal and extraskeletal. In which uh, in skeletal, it will lead to increased cartilage formation and skeletal growth. And in extraskeletal, it will lead to increased protein synthesis and cell growth and proliferation. And then uh, growth hormone also have uh, effect uh, anti insulin actions uh, to fat, which will increase lipolysis and also uh, carbohydrate metabolism, where it will increase blood sugar and other anti insulin effects. Okay, and then uh, both the growth hormone and insulin-like growth factor will have feedback mechanism that will inhibit GHRH release and stimulate GHRH release as well as inhibits a GH synthesis and release. Okay, so next let's go to the short stature. Okay, so this is the definition of short stature. Okay, you need to remember this. Uh, based on the parental protocols, uh, a short stature is uh, when the child has height below third percentile or less than two standard deviation for age and gender, or when there is uh, when their height is significantly below genetic potentials, which is uh, less than two standard deviation below mid parental target. Okay, I will explain later on the genetic potential. Uh, the, or they have abnormally slow growth velocity, or uh, downwardly growth 
placental channels on growth chart for child more than 18 months age. So uh, what is the average height ve velocity? So high velocity depends on the phase. As you can see, prenatal is the most uh, rapid phase. So they can grow 1.2 to 1.5 centimeter per week infancy. Uh, they can increase, increase uh, in height for 23 to 28 centimeter per year, childhood 5 to 6.5 centimeter per year. Puberty, uh, according to gender, okay, girls can be uh, approximately 8.3 centimeter per year, while boys uh, approximately 9.5 9 centimeter per year. And then uh, we talk about the targeted height. So it, you can um, calculate it using the sex adjusted mid parental height, MPH, uh, which are different for boys and girls. So basically, just for boys, you just add uh, the parents' height plus 13 uh, divided by 2. And for girls, uh, add the parents' height minus 13 divided by 2. Okay. So uh, less than two standard deviation from the target height, uh, we will consider it as a short stature. Okay, so okay, this is also another important slide. Uh, when you see uh, patients with short stature, you need to come with, you need to know the causes, <laughs> the possible causes and etiology. So there are several uh, possible causes. So first, uh, you can, first is a variation of normal, can be either family short stature or constitutional growth delay or the patient, uh, the child can have uh, intrinsic short stature, for example, in case of a uh, smaller than gestational age, or if they have genetic syndromes, for example, Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, or Prader-Willi syndrome, or they have skeletal dysplasia, like uh, achondroplasia or hypochondroplasia. Okay, and of course, systemic disease can affect the growth of the child. So if patient has infection, for example, HIV infection, TB infection, they can have short stature, as well as other chronic infection of other system. For example, chronic cardiac disease, uh, renal disease, GI, GI disease uh, like cystic fibrosis or IBD, CNS, uh, lung disease or malignancy. And then another important point is endocrine apotis. If they have um, problems with their hormone, of course, they will have a difficulty in growing, particularly the thyroid hormone and growth hormone. For example, so you need to know whether this patient has a hypothyroidism or hypopituitism that will lead to uh, reduce in growth hormone and also thyroid hormone uh, secretion. Or if a patient has isolated growth hormone deficiency, uh, growth hormone insensitivity in case of Larry syndrome or other kind of um, endocrine uh, disease, for example, Cushing syndrome, diabetes mellitus, precocious puberty, pseudo hypoparathyroidism or pseudo, pseudo hypoparathyroidism. So lastly, don't forget to exclude uh, non-organic causes in case of psychosocial deprivation, as I said before, a chronic profound anagenesis can lead to short stature as well as nutritional dwarfing uh, due to um, maladaptive mal nutrition. Okay, so let's go in detail a little bit on the variation of normal. So variation of normal uh, can be either family short stature or constitutional delay. So there are some clues that might, lead, uh, that might help you in differentiating uh, two, uh, two different kind of disease uh, condition. First, uh, look at the parent stature. So if uh, the parent stature is small, either one or both, uh, most probably uh, it is a family short stature. Compared to constitutional delay, the parent stature usually are average. And then uh, in family short stature, usually the parent's property are normal, while in constitutional delay, uh, the parent's property is often delayed. And then uh, in family short stature, usually their birth length, uh, growth, bone age, timing of property, uh, pubertal growth is usually normal. Uh, but then uh, eventually the adult height will also will become short because they follow the genetic. But then in constitutional delay, uh, the child might have a slow uh, growth uh, during the mid infancy until puberty. And if we do bone age, uh, it can be delayed and the timing of puberty also delayed. And because of the delayed puberty, uh, the pubertal growth will also uh, delay and the rate of uh, growth will slightly diminish. But then eventually, uh, when they are adult, they will reach the targeted height. So to make it easier, just look at the growth chart. As you can see in the family genetic short stature, uh, the growth velocity uh, is always uh, below the, upper, the present time. Uh, but for the constitutional delay of uh, growth and puberty, um, 
usually uh, they will have a slower velocity during the childhood and then they will have delayed puberty but once they achieve the puberty uh, they will usually achieve the target height okay so next uh, you need to also look for any genetic syndrome so genetic syndromes that are related with short stature are down syndrome so look for at the face look for any uh, broad flat face slanting eyes epicanthe eye fold uh, short nose and look at the um, the mouth can be a uh, small and arch palate look at the hand it can be it, they can have short and broad hands with uh, uh, and also look at the single palm crease and then another syndrome is a uh, turner syndrome uh, so they are characterized by um low hairline uh, widely spaced nipples and also they will have uh, problems in achieving puberty okay so other uh, syndromes that are related with short stature is prader willi syndrome so uh, on the face examination uh, you might want to see if uh, there is any narrow temple distance and nasal bridge uh, they have uh, almond shaped eyes or and my service strabismus so on the mouth, look for any uh, thin upper lip with downturn mouth, and they are usually associated with uh, some hormone um, dysfunction that will lead to overweight or obesity. It's okay. about it's about it's so, 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 uh, which is uh, achondroplasia or dwarfism. Uh, look for the characteristic lah. Uh, frontal bossing, uh, shortened limbs, genoverum. And hypochondroplasia is just a milder version of achondroplasia. Okay, from the history, uh, we say before that the net, uh, the infertile period is um, important. The natal period is important. So ask the mother if there is any complication during pregnancy, if uh, he's having uh, Preeclampsia, hypertension, if the mom smoking or taking alcohol or having history of infections uh, during pregnancy, uh, for the birth history, ask for the gestational age, if there is any prematurity, uh, low birth weight and length, uh, ask for the mood of delivery that might uh, help you uh, and ask for APCA score, uh, ask for any neonatal complication, uh, ask for developmental milestone, if there is any delay or anything. And ask, don't forget to ask about the nutrition, uh, ask about the general well being of the child, appetite, energy, sleep, bowel habits, and also the pattern of growth from the child and child relationship, uh, medical history, any underlying illness, uh, if the child is taking any medications, and the family history. Ask for any short stature in three generations that might uh, indicate a family short stature, or ask about the age of onset and puberty of the same sex in the family. That might lead, uh, that might give a clue for constitutional delay. Okay, for the physical examination, of course, you want to take the anthropometry, uh, take the height, weight, head circumference, uh, upper, lower segment ratio, and the arm span. Uh, measure the height of the parents uh, so that you can calculate the mid parental height, the targeted height for the child, uh, the general appearance and behavior. Look for any dysmorphism that might suggest any syndromic features. And also important to look for the pubertal staging using the tennis staging. Okay, so this is just the technique to measure the height. For those, uh, for a child aged less than two years, we measure the recumbent length using the infantometer. Aged more than two years, we measure the standing height using stereometer. So this is the upper to lower body segment ratio. Basically, the upper and lower segment is divided by the pubic synthesis. So um, uh, the normal ratio is after seven days is usually is supposedly one so if uh, the child have higher upper lower body segment ratio it might indicate uh, short limb dwarfism in case of turner syndrome if uh, the if uh, the, the child have a lower upper lower uh, ratio might suggest uh, marfan syndrome and then uh, the same unspent to height ratio uh, if more than 1.05, uh, it might indicate uh, Marfan syndrome or hypogonadism. Okay, investigation, uh, general investigation that can be done is uh, F, as usual, uh, foot blackout, renal profile, liver function test, ESR, or urinalysis. Or if you uh, are concerned if the patient is having some uh, syndrome or genetic uh, problem, okay, do chromosomal analysis. 
and importantly, uh, ask uh, uh, do endocrine test, uh, look for any hypothyroidism by taking thyroid function test, uh, take the growth factors, uh, IGF-1, or if you are still strong suspicious of uh, growth hormone problems, uh, we can do growth hormone stimulation test. And then imaging studies include bone age, CT or MRI of the brain. Okay, others, if uh, there is suspicious of high causes, can do the analysis or radiograph of the spine. Okay, so this is uh, a little bit about the bone age. So bone age is take uh, by, uh, we can take the radiograph of the left hand and wrist and compare to the gruelic pile atlas, as you can see as the picture. So it's just uh, to provide information about the skeletal maturation. So we can have either delayed bone age or advanced bone age. So delayed bone age, meaning that the skeletal age is younger than the chronological age. Uh, so this means that the child can have a catch up potential for linear growth. But if the child have an advanced bone age, this means that the child is having rapid maturation of the skeleton uh, that might uh, lead to early cessation of growth. Okay, management, uh, of course, uh, it is according to the causes. Uh, either hypothyroidism, uncontrolled diabetes, or chronic illnesses. So we treat the causes. And then uh, we can give psychological support for non-treatable causes in case of uh, genetic or family short stature uh, or any syndromic condition. And then this is just uh, some indication for gross hormone treatment in children. Okay. So next is tall stature. So tall stature is uh, opposite of the short stature. They also, uh, the definition is the height above 97 percentile for age and sex, or more than two standard deviation above the mean for a defined uh, population. So, however, the tall stature is usually an uh, uncommon complaint, and the etiology is either a variation of normal, okay, we, it can be a familiar tall stature or, or also known as constitutional tall stature. Uh, it can be due to excessive growth at birth, or we can say uh, macrosomia. So if the patient, if the mom has a maternal diabetes or primary hyperinsulinism, and then any endocrine problems, uh, excess growth hormone, precocious puberty, as well as congenital adrenal hyperplasia, or some genetic conditions, for example, Marfan syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome, or Soto syndrome, can lead to tall stature, and lastly, uh, obesity. Okay, so uh, family tall stature is the most common cause of uh, tall stature. Uh, so uh, the clue suggesting the family tall stature is that when there is a family history of tall stature, the child has no dysmorphic features, uh, and usually the high velocity will be in the high normal range, uh, and then you age, the bone age is normal. So uh, most probably it's a family tall stature. So it is important for you to get the parents' height for you to calculate the mid parental height. Okay, and then okay, uh, another cause of tall stature can be excess cross hormone secretion. So excess growth hormone secretion can be acromegaly versus or gigantism. But you just need to remember that gigantism happen uh, during childhood, so before they achieve puberty. So that means that the epiphyseal plate is not yet closed. So uh, in terms of height, uh, they will have increase of height, and the puberty and gonadal development will also be affected because they didn't achieve the puberty yet. So the puberty onset can be affected and the gonadal development can be reduced. Okay, so otherwise the facial uh, features is actually similar with acromegaly. They have the protruding jaw and the prominent forehead. But in acromegaly, because of, it happens after puberty, so their height is not affected. Okay. Uh, next is Klinefelter syndrome. Okay, it is uh, happen in male, 47 SSY. So the characteristic will, will uh, is uh, the male will be having is a tall and slim, have a long legs compared to their trunk, and it is also associated with uh, learning difficulties. And then Marfan syndrome. So Marfan syndrome is uh, an autosomal dominant abnormality of the cognitive tissue. Uh, they will have increased arm span to height ratio. There are some, uh, there are simple signs for you to know that this patient is Marfan or not. Uh, first is the stamp sign. You ask the patient to fold uh, their thumb into the closed fist. And if the thumb tip extends from palm of hand, uh, it means that the sign is positive. Or you can uh, do the Walker Murdoch sign where you ask the patient to grip uh, the wrist with the opposite hand. Uh, and if the thumb and the fifth finger of the hand overlap with each other, uh, meaning that the Walker Murdoch sign is positive. So basically, it just shows that the muffin 
uh, that this patient is having a uh, abnormally long fingers because Marfa syndrome do have a uh, long arms, legs, and fingers. They will usually have a short torso, short torso, and abnormal chest and heart and lung problems. Okay, and then lastly, is the cerebral gigantism or Sotos syndrome. As you can see, uh, okay, Sotos syndrome is uh, due to mutations in NSD1 gene. So as you can see in this child, uh, it has a macrocephaly, macrocephaly no, no, prominent forehead and jaw, um, and hypothyroidism, which is the increased distance uh, between the eyes. And also you can look for any high arch palate, large hands and feet with thickened subcutaneous tissues. So investigation, if you suspect that factor, you can do cardiotyping. If you suspect hypothyroidism, do thyroid function test. Uh, if you think it is uh, excess growth hormone, uh, do test for IGF-1. And also can assess bone age assessment. Okay, if you think that it is a problem of sex hormone, um, do test on serum LH, FSH, and testosterone levels. Uh, for acromegaly, can do glucose suppression test for growth hormone. If you think the problem is at three, serum cortisol and serum prolactin. So management is same according to the causes, treat the causes. I just want to list a little bit about the pituitary gigantism. I think tahu sudah sudah sekolah tahu tak ya setelah berikut ini tak ya lah. You lah ya you bring up semua tu ke? Huh? Kalau aku lakukan MCQ ni, you nak ke? No. Hmm? You belajar lah macam, macam oh. ah, Kenapa you susah diri? Ada lagi? Uh, dah Tak ada hmm, Okay, tak apa lah cukup lah tu ha. Setakat tu, ha, tak tahu lah macam mana ha, Rasa saya takut tengok benda Tak apa lah ha. Tengok IEM pula macam mana? Boleh buat simple tak? IEM satu hal juga IEM ni sekadar tahu je you all ni Oh, present IEM Okay, so I will present about the inborn area metabolism okay. You know, so, I masa student tak pernah pergi tanah, tanah pelajar benda ni tau Masa student Sesanya lah you all hmm. Ah tak belajar IEM semua ni semua Tak apalah you all nak belajar, tak apalah ha. So in our body, uh, all metabolic process require enzyme as catalyst. But in the case of inborn area metabolism, there is absence of this enzyme, or the cofactor, or even the transporter, causing uh, either accumulation or deficiency of a specific metabolite. Metabolite, or it can be a combination of both process. So usually it is inherited in autosomal recessive pattern. So it is a rare disorder. And uh, sometimes neonatal biochemical screening is recommended. Next slide. Next slide. So this is uh, the three major groups of uh, this IEM. So the Whoa. first is the disorders leading to the toxicity due to accumulated metabolite. For example, uh, amino acidopathies, urea cycle disorder, organic acidemia, carbohydrate disorder, neurotransmitter disorder. Second is the disorder of the energy metabolism, such as mitochondrial disease. I put the ingat at number there. The Kulaha, the, the MILAS, which is the use and abbreviation of mitochondrial encephalopathy, lactic acidosis, and also stroke like syndrome, and also the extremely rare MERV syndrome. Uh, then we have the fatty acid oxidation disorder, uh, glycogen storage disorder. And last one, we have the disorders of the complex organelles, such as lysosomal storage disorder, and also peroxisomal disorder. So I want to highlight about uh, certain uh, disease only. Uh, so the first one is amino acidopathies, which is caused by a defect in the metabolic pathway of the amino acids. So it can be acidemia, which is the abnormal accumulation of amino acids in the plasma, or aciduria, which is abnormal excretion of amino acids into the urine. So under, under this group, we have the phenylketonuria disease. So this is an autosomal recessive disease caused by... I think about 5 years old, I see. I see every day, I see. 
Okay, continue tak apa. You all nak belajar tak apa. Continue lah. Caused by the absence of deficient activity of phenyl adrenaline hydroxylase. So, uh, from the diagram that I've uh, provided, uh, we, uh, the major pathway for the metab catabolism of phenyl adrenaline is uh, phenyl adrenaline converted into the tyrosine by phenyl adrenaline alanine hydroxylase. But then, when there is a deficient of this uh, phenyl adrenaline hydroxylase, the major pathway is disrupted and it favors to the uh, alternative pathway, which is the phenyl alanine itself is converted into the phenyl pyruvate. So uh, eventually it will cause an increased phenyl alanine, but decrease in tyrosine. So this disease affect the brain the most because uh, uh, the tyrosine is needed to uh, in the production of the neurotransmitter. Uh, and then when there is a uh, accumulation of this uh, uh, conversion of this phenyl lactate and also phenyl acetate, both of these are phenyl ketone, which give uh, the 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 urine the sweet odor. Thanks. So the clinical features of this uh, disease is there's intellectual disabilities, fruity odor urine, vomiting, developmental delay, uh, ADHD, and also ASD features. So the diagnosis would be made by uh, elevated plasma phenylalanine value of more than six milligram per deciliter. So the brief management of this uh, disease is by uh, uh, restricting the phenylalanine and also modified preparation of tetrahydrobioptrin, which is uh, it, it helps to convert the phenylalanine into the precursor of dopamine and also serotonin. Next is next is a uh, maple syrup urine disease. It is also an autosomal recessive disease. So the, uh, in this case, there is deficiency in the carboxylase enzyme, which is uh, important to initiate the degradation of the keto acid analogs. So this is a, a branch chain amino acid disease. So if you can see uh, the, the diagram, so uh, the deficiency in decarboxylase causing the accumulation of the acid. Next slide. So the clinical features would be poor feeding, vomiting, tachypneic, alternating hypotonia and also hypertonia, or pistotonus, and also maple syrup uh, or the urine due to the keto acid itself. Uh, so the diagnosis is made by uh, observing the elevated plasma leucine, isoleucine, allo isoleucine, and also the valine. Uh, sometimes imaging volatiles is uh, needed to reveal any uh, cerebral edema. So for the management of brief management of this disease is by uh, fluid therapy, intravenous uh, mannitol or hypertonic solution in case of cerebral edema. Sometimes if uh, there is a very the patient is very acidotic. We should uh, do a dialysis, and also for a long term management, we restrict the branch chain amino acid diet. Yeah, so this yeah. uh, agitation, confusion, vomiting. Sometimes the patient can uh, be comatose, uh, seizures, irritability, and neonate will exhibit all the symptoms after protein feeding. So the, the diagnosis will be made on lab investigations, such as we can see hyperammonemia, ketosis. Uh, we can do also genetic testing, liver function test, plasma amino acid profile, urine organic acid profile. And uh, the brief management would be by reducing the protein intake, uh, by giving the crystalline essential amino acids, the nine essential amino acids. And for OTC and carbamyl phosphate synthase enzyme deficiency, we treat with 
phenyl butyrate because it will prevent the accumulation of the ammonia. And then we can do liver transplant and we can also opt for hemodialysis if the, very, uh, the ammonia level is very high. Next is a carbohydrate disorder. So there's a deficiency in enzymes in the pathway of the glycogen, galactose, and also fructose. So all this will lead to hypoglycemia, liver dysfunction, myopathy, uh, and also cardiomyopathy. Uh, so for instance, the under this group is glycogen storage disease. So there's uh, the eight subgroups of this uh, disease. And it mainly can be divided into hepatic, muscular, and cardiac subgroup. Uh, hyperglycemia is associated with a hepatic subgroup. So this is the metabolism of the glycogen. Next slide. So for this, wow, uh, I find, I find out, huh? <laughs> so this is the uh, eight uh, glycogen storage disease uh, types. But but uh, what I like about the the type one is associated with hypoglycemia because the organ affected is the uh, uh, liver, uh, and that uh, we cannot uh, utilize the 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 glu uh, glycogen to oh, to. Tidak tak apa. Okay, okay, okay. Posi, posi. Okay, oh, so, okay. Uh, so we uh, we need to know how to approach uh, to this disease. So some of the clues that we can find is. In all neonates with unexplained, overwhelming, or progressive disease, particularly after a normal pregnancy or birth, but then uh, the, uh, the condition deteriorates after feeding, or patient with acute encephalopathy, particularly preceded with vomiting or fever, unexplained symptoms and signs of significant metabolic acidosis, hypoglycemia, and acute liver failure, history of unexplained seizures, hypoglycemic patient, history of unexplained death among siblings. Maternal history of health syndrome. There's also history of consanguineous marriage and also unusual smell of burnt sugar in maple sugar urine disease, sweaty feet in isovaleric acidemia. So the investigation that need to be uh, ordered is uh, uh, the basic include the blood count, the electrolytes, the, the liver enzyme, the creatinine kinase, creatinine, urea, uric acid coagulation profile. Also, the blood glucose level, serum lactate, blood, blood gases, plasma, plasma ammonium level, and also uh, keto sticks. Uh, for special one, uh, we do the acyl carnitines, amino acids, either plasma or serum, <clears throat> organic acids in the urine, orotic acid in the urine, if suspected urea cycle defects. And all these samples should be sent immediately to the lab with ice. So this is the interpretation of uh, the lab investigation with specific to the disease itself. So this is the conclusion or the algorithm of uh, how we want to approach the, this disease. So first we need to, from the history, and there is a poor feeding, vomiting, not due to GI anomalies, lethargy, convulsion, uh, also, or the patient is comatose, and then we differentiate the diagnosis. Either it could be a trauma, infectious, and also metabolic disorder. So, under metabolic, if you suspect metabolic disorder, we obtain the plasma ammonia, and then we interpret either it's high or normal, and then we obtain the blood blood pH, carbon dioxide, and also the bicarbs, and then we calculate the the anion gap. If it's normal. Uh, probably a urea cycle effect if it's high, high anion gap, acidosis such as organic acidemia, and uh, normal anion gap, we have the amino acidopathies and also uh, galactosemia. So that's all for my presentation. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, next, I will continue with uh, and septic shock. Okay. So uh, first, we have to know that uh, this is the continuum of the sepsis. So usually, uh, there are SERS. Sepsis SERS is a systemic inflammatory response syndrome. And sepsis is the SERS plus infection. And then if for severe sepsis, when there is evidence of an organ damage, and for septic shock, shock so 
it means that it, the patient has hypotension. So first, let's go what's a uh, uh, SUS. What's a uh, SUS criteria? So you have to bear in mind, SUS doesn't mean to be uh, the patient has infection. It's just inflammatory response. So these are the four criteria for SUS. As you can see, the first three is the vital signs. So we have to know the vital signs of every patient. So first start with the temperature. It's more than 38.5 degrees Celsius or less than 36. And also tachycardia. So a tachycardia for children is different because it's according to age. So it said here that it's more than two standard deviation. And sometimes patient can also have bradycardia, which less than 10 percentile. This is a different according to the age. And then the third is the respiratory rate. So the patient usually has the kidney or more than two standard deviation or patient on mechanical ventilation. And the last one is the leukocyte. So you have to know what are the leukocyte count. It, it, it can be elevated or depressed. So, yes. so this is the table of the vital signs. Uh, if you, as you can see, to easily remember, you have just to know the, the highest because you, usually patient can with a uh, kidney or tachycardia. As you can see for respiratory rate, it start from 50. And then as you can see, it, it minus five. 50, 45, 40, 35. Okay, so same also to heart rate, it minus 10. So you have to uh, know a little bit about this. Later you can read. Next. Okay. So, Later you can read. Which one you not present? You can read it later when you have. Uh, Contoh, bukan later you can read. So kampung untuk you ni. You can read it later. Guna bahasa proper sikit. Uh, just word structure tau. Okay. Uh, you can Kapsis read it later. Okay. Next is uh, sepsis. When there's uh, evidence of infection. Like I said before, a SERS plus suspected or proven infection. So we have to know what are the uh, patient. Next. Okay, next is severe sepsis. Uh, so sepsis when is evidence of the end organ damage, such as uh, it can be cardiovascular system, respiratory system, or other organ damage. And then for the septic shock, so uh, septic shock defined as when there is evidence of hypotension. Despite we give a uh, normal saline of 40 ml uh, per kg of acetoinic uh, fluid, uh, the patient still has hypertension. Therefore, we need to give vasoactive drug to maintain the blood pressure. So these are the definitions. So how does uh, sepsis occur? We have to remember that uh, uh, it's a normal response uh, for our body to fight infection. But in sepsis patient, there is more in co-inflammatory mediators. So it is imbalance. So the, the end result is cellular injury, which uh, normal should be cellular repair. But when it's more inflammatory cytokines, they will lead to cellular injury. So, uh, so when there is uh, increase in inflammation, co-inflammation, anti-inflammation system, cellular repair, okay, huh? okay. Huh? Okay, continue on. And then, uh, so why the sepsis is uh, dangerous? Because it uh, cause an organ damage by these two mechanism. It either to tissue ischemia, uh, because lack of oxygen to perfuse the tissue, and also cytopathic injury due to uh, uh, oxidative stress damage such as ROS, and also sepsis can induce apoptosis. So this led to various end organ damage and sometimes can lead to multi-organ dysfunction, which is defined as more than two organ damage. So next. Okay, so uh, for the septic shock, uh, that, uh, I mentioned previously, the definition is the hypotension despite IV fluid. So why it happens so? So we have to know that 
there is diffuse vasodilation. So there is excessive uh, vasoactive uh, mediators such as nitric oxide, and there is impact vasopressin such as antidiuretic hormone. So when it is uh, excessive vasoactive, this led to diffuse vasodilation. So when this occurs, despite we give the IV fluid, the patient still have hypotension. Therefore, we need to give vasoactive such as no adrenaline. So what are the patients that ha has high risk to develop septic shock? So first, in the neonates patient, less than one month, or patient with a serious injury or major burns, coma, and some, uh, for patients with chronic uh, medical condition such as uh, untreated congenital heart disease, and for and patient with uh, immune suppression like malignancy or patient on chemotherapy, and large surgical incision because we know last surgical incision prone to infection, and then patient on catheter. This is important because many patients in an ICU they are on catheters on device, so this can lead to infections and patient with urinary tract abnormalities. So what are the clinical features? So apart from the vital sign that I just mentioned just now, so the babies or the patient can come with fever, poor feeding, irritable, or become lethargy, and also tachycardic, tachymnia, or hypotension. Depends on the stage. So uh, because uh, sepsis is SIRS plus infection, so we have to investigate where is the source of infection. So I arrange according to head to toe. To, uh, for you not to miss. So you start from the CNS. Is, is there any signs of meningism? And then you go down, is there any uh, inflamed tonsil, any acidic tonsil? So you have to check uh, the mouth. And then for the lower, lower respiratory system, you have to know if the patient has cough, has pneumonia. So you have to do the physical examination. And also sometimes patient can have chest tube Catheter or pleural catheter. So you have to examine is there any surgical site infections by evidence of wetness? And then you go to stomach, you ask regarding about the abdominal pain and other GI symptoms. And sometimes pressure on CKD, they on the peritoneal dialysis. So you have to uh, assess the fluid, the uh, peritoneal dialysis fluid. And then Okay, and then you go down, you, uh, you ask about the, any symptoms to, to suggest UTI, such as urgency, the soya, loin, back pain. And then you go to the skin, you assess, is there any erythematous skin, any edema, and also for a catheter, because almost all patient has banula, so you have to assess and palpate the banula. Is that warm or redness? And lastly, you can uh, palpate uh, the bone and joint to look for signs of inflammation. And also, the, for the septic shock patient, a uh, patient can come with warm shock and cold shock. At initial stage, patient will come with warm shock. Why warm shock? Because it is distributive shock. So as you guys remember, uh, blood pressure is, uh, uh, cardiac output is equal to blood pressure times total paper resistance. So for one shot, the cardiac output is okay, but for the total paper resistance, it's low. So that's why it's called hyperdynamic stage. So for the cold shot, in the data, there, there will be vasoconstriction. So total paper resistance, okay, but for the uh, cardiac output, is reduced. Also called hypodynamic stage. So as you can see for the uh, table, so one shot, the Peripheries will be warm compared to cold shock, they will, will be cold and clammy. And for the CIT for warm shock, usually normal, and cold shock will be more than two seconds. And pass is bounding for warm shock, and for cold, we weak and tachycardia. Uh, and BP usually maintain in warm shock, but for cold shock, cold shock because it's later, so patient will have hypertension and also pass pressure. So what are the investigations? So we start with blood investigation first. So we have to, we have to measure the blood glucose. So sometimes because we reduce uh, food intake and uh, increase metabolic demands, sometimes patient can come with hypoglycemia. 
And then for ABG, because we know that sepsis cause a reduce in tissue perfusion. So they will be increasing an aerobic activity. So led to lactate, that led to metabolic acidosis. And then for the complete blood count for, to, for the search criteria, and then assess the serum lactate, electrolyte, and then because it can involve multiple organs, so you have to do a function test or look for urea and creatinine. And also for the liver, you have to do a liver function test. And then because this is sepsis, so you have to do culture. You have to do blood culture. Ideally, you have to do blood culture before giving antibiotics. And sometimes you can do your analysis, look for nitrites, because nitrites give evidence of infections. And also you can do urine culture. And then for the radio imaging, depends on your clinical. If you suspect a patient is having pneumonia, you have to do the chest X-ray. And uh, uh, for the abdomen, if you suspect a patient is abdominal pathology, you have to do CT abdomen. For brain, do the CT brain. So what are the management? This is according to PITS protocol. So first, because it's oh, emergency. Okay. Is that what you need? Oxygen, intravenous fluid, and then oceans, fluid resuscitation, antibiotics, inotropes. Tujilah, cukup lah. Thank you, Datuk. Hmm? Nak? Oh, you nak, you nak, you nak detail ni. Nak, Lepas tu, ha? Jadi, this okay, are the, the example of drugs. Uh, Cephotaxin. Example of like antibiotics. Uh, whew, one meal per hour, zero per zero, one, oh, dahsyatnya. Okay, ha? Lepas tu? Okay. 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 Wow. Okay. And forward, forward now. Okay, and then this is the uh, supportive. So uh, you can give steroid, IV, mm. IG. Depends. Maybe I give given, not given. Depends. Uh, on the patient. Sometimes give steroid, IV, IG. Eh, passive transfusion if the child uh, any meat, RRT, CRT, uh, or the family conference. Uh, okay, lagi. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the goal, so we have to make sure. Ah, the goal. Yeah, so the goal okay, at the ha. end, based on organs. If it's CVS, you have to have okay, normal. What's goal to have? The IT is less than two seconds, and patient has normal pass, and warm extremity, and also normal blood pressure. And for neurological, assess the mental status. So the normal mental status and normal GCS, and for respiratory, Patient is not taking it and no excessive muscle use. And for renal, you have to target urine more than one meat per kg per hour. Okay, that's it. Okay, lah. Okay. Okay, anything else? Tak ada. You only ask question lah. Complicated. Nanti you tanya soal-soal yang mengaruh ni. Okay, ada apa lagi? Hmm? Sekadar tahulah, eh? uh, something at the back of your mind that this lecture all about. We're not sure how. Hmm. Uh, in our work, most of the case admitted because of pneumonia, bronchitis, yeah. Or pneumonia, sometimes AG. Fortunately, we have this sepsis case. Sometimes we have uh, meningitis and the rest, eh? and then the rest uh, have normal case. Eh? So IEM is once once a while we see it in our hospital, in our ward. Actually, many of them is since birth at birth, eh? and then uh, growth growth abnormality is there in children is a lot. Eh? It's mainly something you have to know, but you have to recognize it. It is hard management are very targeted, eh? and then the important for you all to recognize it. If you can't take a GP, so you can't recognize it. Bagi lecture, belajar lecture, you can main lagi, tapi bila depan patient tak recognize. And you know whom you want to, who you want to refer to, and we are going to manage the case. Eh? You want to learn how we manage the case, you come to us, become a pediatrician, or then we teach you how to manage. What uh, again? Septic shock, uh, sepsis is, um, 
understand the difference eh? is a uh, septic shock sepsis inflammatory reaction and infection sampai infection ya yeah. and then the basically how to recognize basically the basic treatment that's all finish tak tahu so what you should ask the question about this in you to you all or not yo yo dah belajar kalau yo tak belajar kalau belajar kena tanya kalau tak belajar tak tanya so for the first topic the day will question come out definitely what the second and third topic ni tak sure okay mai finish any, any question okay finish yo tahu beliau balik sini Ha? Tak tahu lagi, macam mana saya tahu dah Tak apa lah, nanti awak tahu sendiri Okey ha. Bila dah okay. ha. Thank you, Doktor Terima kasih, Doktor Thank you, Presenter Terima kasih, Presenter Terima kasih, Presenter